Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is the Old Testament in 88 days and we are on day 8. Today we'll be reading Exodus 12 through 20. So, we, uh, we left off with uh, Moses and uh, the plagues. I'm trying to... Uh, to get out of Egypt. The Pharaoh keeps saying no, 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 and changing his mind and lying. So, here is Exodus 12, verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year of year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the house will be too little for a lamb, let him and his neighbor next to unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year, and ye shall take it out from the sheep, or from the goats, and ye shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am Yahweh. The blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to Yahweh throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall ye eat unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. In the first day there shall be a holy convocation. In the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses, for whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even so shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel whether he be a stranger or born in land. Ye shall eat nothing leavened, and all your habitations ye shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the initial uh, lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. For Yahweh will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side post, Yahweh will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. He shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. And it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which Yahweh will give you, according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. It shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? 
that ye shall say it is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. The children of Israel went away and did as Yahweh had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass that at midnight Yahweh smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captain that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up, and in the night he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go, serve Yahweh, as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your herds, as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We will all be dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. The children of Israel journeyed from Ramesses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. And a mixed multitude went up also with him, in flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was four hundred and thirty years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass that all the hosts of Yahweh went out for the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much reserved unto Yahweh for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of Yahweh to be observed of all the children of Israel and their generations. And Yahweh said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof, but every man's servant that is brought for money bought for money when they has circumcised them then shall he eat thereof a foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof in one house shall it be eaten thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh or brought out of the house neither shall ye break a bone thereof all the congregation of israel shall keep it and when a stranger shall sojourn with thee and will keep the passover of yahweh let all his males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is home-born, and unto the stranger that is sojourned among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, as Yahweh commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the selfsame day that Yahweh did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Exodus 13 and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whatsoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both man and beast, it is mine. And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand Yahweh brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. This day came ye out in the month of Edbib. It shall be when Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, and the Hivites, and the Amorites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee, a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep the servants in this month. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to Yahweh. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall be no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which Yahweh did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that Yahweh's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath Yahweh brought thee out of Egypt. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in 
his season from year to year. And it shall be when Yahweh shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites, he shall swear, as he swear unto thee and to thy fathers, and shall give it to thee. That thou shalt set apart unto Yahweh all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the males shall be Yahweh's. And every firstling of an ass shalt thou redeem with a lamb, and if thou wilt not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck, and it all the firstborn of man among thy children shalt thou redeem. And it shall be when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What is this that thou hast done unto him? By strength of hand Yahweh brought us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. And it came to pass, and Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that Yahweh slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of male man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to Yahweh all that openeth the matrix being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And it shall be for a token upon thine hand, and for frontlets between thine eyes. For by strength of hand Yahweh brought us forth out of Egypt. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that Elohim led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, for Elohim said, Lest peradventure the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But Elohim led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, Elohim will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them by the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light and to go by day and night. And he took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Exodus 14. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they churn and encamp before Pharaoth, between Migdol and the sea, over against Baal-Zephon, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in land, the wilderness hath shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am Yahweh. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took six hundred chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them, and all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtake them, encamping by the sea, besides, beside Pharaoh, before Baal-Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto Yahweh, and they said, unto Moses, Because there was no graves in Egypt, thou hast taken us away to die in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Yahweh shall fight for you, and he shall hold your peace. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift up thou thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on trial ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, 
upon his chariot and upon his horsemen. The angel of Elohim, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them, and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave no light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other at all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahweh caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land. The waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch Yahweh yeah, looked upon the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians. And he took off their chariot wheels, that they drave them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for Yahweh fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, and the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned his, to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and Yahweh overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the heaven. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus saith Yahweh, saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which Yahweh did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared Yahweh, and believed Yahweh and his servant Moses. Exodus 15 then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto Yahweh, and spake, saying, I will sing unto Yahweh, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Yahweh is my strength and my song, and he is become my salvation. He is my Elohim, and I will prepare him an habitation, my father's Elohim, and I will exalt him. Yahweh is a man of war, Yahweh is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his hosts hath he cast into the sea. His chosen captains are also drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them, they sank into the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Yahweh, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Yahweh, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. And in the greatness of thine excellency thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou settest forth thy wrath which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as in heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil, my lust shall be satisfied upon them, I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covered them, they sank as lead in the mighty waters. Who is like unto thee? O Yahweh, among the gods, who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, and doing wonders? Thou stretchest out thine right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sour shall take hold on the inhabitants of Palestinia. The dukes of Edom shall be amazed, the mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them. By the greatness of thy arm they shall be as still as stone, till thy people pass over, O Yahweh, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Yahweh, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Yahweh, O Adonai, which thy hands have established. Yahweh shall reign for ever and ever. 
The horse of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea, and Yahweh brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on the dry land in the midst of the sea. Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to Yahweh, for he hath triumphed gloriously. Horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter, therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto Yahweh, and Yahweh showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance. And there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of Yahweh thy Elohim, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, I will give ear to the, his commandments, and keep all his statutes, which I, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahweh that healeth thee. And they came to Elim, where where were twelve wells of water and threescore and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Exodus 16 And they took their journey from Elim, and the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai. On the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said Yahweh unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, At even when ye shall know that Yahweh hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. In the morning then shall ye see the glory of Yahweh, for that he heareth your murmurings against Yahweh. And what are we that ye murmur against us? And Moses said, This shall be when Yahweh shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. For that Yahweh heareth your murmurings which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against Yahweh. And Moses spake unto Aaron, saying to, unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before Yahweh, for he hath heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Elohim of Yahweh appeared in the cloud. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am Yahweh your Elohim. And it came to pass that even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. When the dew that was that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoar frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what bread it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which Yahweh hath given you to eat. This is the thing which Yahweh hath commanded. Gather it of every man according to his eating, and Omar for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did met it with an Omar, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, Let no man leave it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left it 
until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. They gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating, and when the sun waxed, hot it melted. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said to them, This is that which Yahweh hath said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath unto Yahweh. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seeth that ye will seeth, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. And they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade, and did not, it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is the Sabbath unto Yahweh, and today ye shall not find it in the field. Six days shall ye gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather, and they found none. And Yahweh said unto Moses, how long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for that Yahweh hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place, let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day, and the house of Israel called the name thereof Man. It was like coriander seed, white, and the taste was like wafers made with honey. And Moses said, This is the thing which Yahweh mindeth. Fill an omar of it to be kept for your generations, that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot and put an omar full of manna therein, and lay it up before Yahweh to be kept for generations. And Yahweh commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept, and the children of Israel did eat manna forty years, until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is the tenth part of an ephah. Don't know what either of those is, but I'm guessing it's just like enough for like one big thing of bread per person. Okay, Genesis, er, excuse me, Exodus 17. And the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of Sin after their journeys according to the commandment of Yahweh and pitched in Red, Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Isn't it interesting how they call it the wilderness of Sin when basically that's where those children of Israel did sin a lot? They did so many sins in the wilderness. That's just, I don't know. I just think it's interesting. It's probably just a coincidence, but it's uh, it's just interesting because yeah, they sinned a lot in the wilderness. That's why they couldn't go into the promised land until most of the older generation died off because of their disbelief and sins that they did. <clears throat> There was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people did chide with Moses, and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said to them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do ye tempt Yahweh? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses, and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried unto Yahweh, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel. And thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thine hand, and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of that place Massah and Merabah because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted Yahweh, saying, Is Yahweh among us or not? Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand atop of the hill with the rod of 
Elohim in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy that they took stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And Yahweh said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Yehovah Nisi. For he said, Because Yahweh hath sworn that Yahweh will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Genesis 18 When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father in law, heard that all that of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel his people, and that Yahweh had brought Israel out of Egypt. Then Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back, and her two sons, of the which the name of the one was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land, and the name of the other was Eliezer. For the Elohim of my father said he was mine help, and deliver me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his son and his wife unto Moses into the wilderness, where he encamped at the mount of Elohim. And he said unto Moses, I, thy father-in-law Jethro, am come unto thee, and thy wife and her two sons with her. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, and did obeisance, and kissed him, and they asked each other of their welfare. They came into the tent. And Moses told his father-in-law, all that the Yahweh had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, and all the travail that had come unto them by the way, and how Yahweh delivered them. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which Yahweh had done in Israel, whom he had delivered out of the hands of the Egyptians. And Jethro said, Blessed be Yahweh, who hath delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who hath delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that Yahweh is greater than all gods, for the thing wherein they dealt proudly, he was above them. And Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for Elohim, and Aaron came, and all the elders of Israel, to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before Elohim. And it came to pass in the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood by Moses from the morning unto the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he had did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand by thee from morning unto even? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of Elohim. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I will judge between one and another, and I make them do know the statutes of God and his laws. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, The thing that thou doest is not good. Thou wilt surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee alone. Thou art not able to perform it thyself. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give thee counsel, and Elohim shall be with thee. Be thou for the people to Elohim word, that thou mayest bring the causes unto Elohim. Thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear Elohim, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them, to be rulers of thousands, and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, and every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. Thou shalt do this thing, and Elohim command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace. 
So Moses hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all that he had said. And Moses chose able men out of all Israel and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rousers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons, the hard causes they brought unto Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. Exodus 19 In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. They were departed from Rephidim, and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto Elohim, and Yahweh called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and to the house of, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people, and laid before them their faces all these words which Yahweh commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahweh had commanded we will do. And Moses returned the word to the people unto Yahweh. And Yahweh said to Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told of the wounds, words of the people unto Yahweh. And Yahweh said to Moses, Go into the the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothing and be ready against the third day for the third day Yahweh will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai and thou shalt set bounds unto thy people round about saying take heed to yourselves that ye go not up into the mount or touch the boulder of it whosoever toucheth the mount shall surely be put to death there shall not in her touch it but he shall surely be stoned or shot through whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, and they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said to the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount. And the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with Elohim, and they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because Yahweh descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake to Elohim, answered him by a voice, and Yahweh came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and Yahweh, and Yahweh called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto Yahweh to gaze, as many of them perceive, and let the priests also which come near to Yahweh, sanctify themselves, lest Yahweh break forth upon them. And Moses said unto Yahweh, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. Yahweh said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, and thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto Yahweh, lest he break forth upon them. So Moses went down unto the people and spake unto them. Exodus 20 And Elohim spake all these words, saying, I am Yahweh, thy Elohim, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. 
Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water underneath. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Yahweh, thy Elohim, am a jealous Elohim, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third day, and fourth generations them, of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh, thy Elohim, in vain. Yeah, I really don't like this one. This one, I hate hearing it when I hear, you know, if somebody at, at the store or something, hear somebody say, uh, like, O-G-O-D or, you know, the other phrases that include saying the Lord's name in vain, especially um, saying, uh, you know, J-E-S-U-S, H-R-S-T, but in a, in a cursing way, not just saying you know the lord's name which is yeshua or jesus christ um so yeah i really hate this one hearing it from other people i really hate it, it just makes me cringe thou shalt not take the name of the lord thy god the name of yahweh thy elohim in vain for yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain remember the sabbath day to keep it holy six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work but the seventh day is the sabbath of yahweh thy elohim in it shalt thou not to do any work thou nor thy son nor thy daughter thy manservant nor thy maidservant nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates for in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings, and the lightnings, and the noise of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And that would have been a sight to see, huh? And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for Elohim has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your face, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where Elohim was. And Yahweh said unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Ye have seen that I have taught with you from heaven. And ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice therein thy burnt offerings, and thy peace offerings, thy sheep, and thine oxen. In all the places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewn stone, for if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shalt thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Okay, that's going to be it for today, guys. Now we're going to be getting into some deep stuff here. Um, Exodus, the end of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Um, it's pretty much whew, a lot of deep stuff about the law. So much detail so much that it's it can get confusing so yeah that's gonna be it for today we will continue tomorrow with exodus 21 so thanks for joining me hope you guys have a great evening morning noon wherever you're at and as always ttfn tata for now take care god bless remember to put god first in everything you do have faith in him have trusted him and wait upon him and you'll never sorry We'll see you tomorrow, God willingly, with the next part of the story in Exodus. Again, see you later.